Hello folks, welcome back to Tommy's Outdoors. One year ago, I put a video about Garmin Instinct watch and that was long-term use review. I used that watch for one year and I shared with you four most important things I learned about this watch. So this video is the most popular on my channel and in fact, you still leaving comments with questions. So I group all those questions and in this video, I'm gonna answer them for you. Okay, so first up is, uh, what's the story with the battery? Is the battery diminished? Um, not really, uh, I'm sure it did, and, and the only thing that I can tell that happens that didn't happen before that when, for example, when you're saving activity, uh, you, sometimes your battery indicator shows like one bar less, and once the, batter, and once the activity is saved, it, like, it goes back to where it was. So that's an obvious indication that the battery is uh, kind of not what it used to be, which is expected after two years. However, and it, when it comes to kind of like a how long the, the watch holds up or how long I can record activity, probably the, there is some uh, deterioration in the battery life, but personally I haven't noticed that yet. How are the buttons now? Uh, nothing changed really. In the previous video I told you that the buttons lost their, their, their nice click, they're still working perfectly fine, you just don't have this kind of feel of click. And yeah, they still don't have this click, obviously, but nothing deteriorated. They're still working perfectly fine. There's no problem with that with them. And a lot of you live, left the comments under the previous video that yeah, this is this happened to me as well. And even people were reporting the same thing happened in Phoenix watches. So I guess they're still functioning, uh, no problem. So a lot of you are reporting issues with altimeter and saying oh maybe you have a one without the altimeter fault and this and that. And so first of all. It might be that you have a faulty unit and and I'm gonna get into issues and and replacement units in a second because I have uh, a, a lot of experience with my previous Phoenix watches with uh, replacement units from Garmin but when it comes to altimeter let's face it it's kind of like a toy it's you know it is meant to um, report on the elevation gain or you know how many meters you climbed how many meters you descended this sort of thing, not to tell you exactly what is the your altitude. Uh, if you're if you're if you need this sort of a um, accurate reading of the alt altitude, you probably need a, a specialized device, not kind of like an ABC watch. Uh, it, it's kind of like a gadget. It works, but remember how it works. It works on uh, air pressure. And I share a short a short story with you. I was cycling. And that that had to do with the Garmin Edge unit on the on the on the bicycle, not with the with the watch. But this is the same principle of how the altimeter works. I was on the descent, right? So I was going down. It's a quite steep descent, and during that descent, the weather changed uh, from temperature from you know 15, 13 Celsius uh, changed to minus one. Uh, the hail start going out down and it was very cold and you know like a like a typical change in the weather like a rapid change in the weather and by the time I reached the uh, bottom of a descent the, the weather changed again you know sun started to shine and the temperature went back and, and all these things um, and when I came back home and I put the, my track into into the computer I saw actually like as if I was climbing and then descending on the, on, the, on the part of the route when I was clearly going down all the time. And that is obviously because, because the altimeter picked up on the change in the air pressure and, and that's how it interpreted it. Um, so these things will happen with the altimeter. So always make sure that, you know, what was happening with the weather, what was happening with, uh, with the air pressure, if you have on inaccurate readings. Now when it comes to issues, because a lot of you said like, oh, I sent the uh, unit, I got the replacement unit, and I got the, you know, the one that I got back was had the same fault. And all I can tell you uh, to that, these things happen. Um, I was replacing my Phoenix watch uh, twice or three times, I think at least twice with a faulty screen. And it was the same thing. Is the screen viewable in polarized sunglasses? Yes, it is but it's viewable because it's synced with the glasses. So uh, if, you, if you rotate it like 90 degrees, uh, then you're not gonna see anything, but, but it is made this way that you need to do this on purpose to not see in the polarized glasses the screen. Uh, in most uh, you know, normal use, it is, it is 
that was taken into account by Garmin, so there's no problem of reading a screen in polarized sunglasses. Uh, next one, can I track dogs with it? Well, <laughs> you know, I noticed that you folks have a big expectations from the, for this watch. Uh, yes, you can track the dogs, but you need to have a dog tracking unit and GPS collars. Uh, so you need to have all the gear to track dogs separately and you put a collar on a dog and have your handheld unit uh, that tracks the dogs and the watch can read uh, information from your handheld unit. So you can track dogs with your on your watch, but you, you can't only with your watch. You, you need to have a dog tracking unit anyway. Next one, and this is again like a big expectation of the watch. Uh, can I use it for scuba diving? No, you can't. You need a proper dive computer if you want to scuba dive. Right? Can I control music with it? Yes, you can. Can I change datum settings? Uh, let me tell you, yes, you can, and this is how you do it. You go to settings. And in settings, you go to system. In system, you go to format. And in format, you got position format. And there it is, datum. And you have a whole load of different datum settings. But in case none of them is what you want, you can always go to user and provide your own DX, DY, and DZ values. And finally, comparison with uh, Garmin Instinct Solar. If you're on the market for this type of watch, ruggedized GPS, uh, ABC watch, go and buy a solar one. Uh, it's a newer device. It has a better power management uh, uh, system. It has a new Sony GPS unit. It has a obviously solar panels. It has a new heart rate sensor with pulse aux function. Uh, so overall, it is a refreshed watch. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, solar panel is not the only change. It makes it worth to buy uh, Instinct Solar. However, if you're on the budget and every $50, every, every $100 uh, really counts for you, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't spend much time thinking about buying the old Instinct, not the Solar one. Because functionally, you're not gonna get more watch uh, with Instinct Solar compared to Instinct. Main question is like, should I upgrade? Um, <laughs> should I upgrade? And you know, one of the answers is like, sure, if you have money, and you're doing it for fun, you know, life's short. Go ahead and upgrade to a new watch. Um, but if you're not this kind of guy, you just, you know, you wanna, you wanna get what you're paying for, um, you know, personally, I wouldn't upgrade. So I think that within the next 12, maybe 14 months, uh, Garmin surely will be releasing Instinct 2. And finally, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.